Welcome to the introduction of Deep Learning from Purdue University. My name is Eugenio Culorcello and I will be the instructor for the course. What is the goal of, of this course? The goal of this course is really to learn the fundamental mathematical tool and programmatic tools that allow us to perceive the world, learn about the world, and operate intelligently in the world to increase our collective benefits. What this really means is that we are teaching a course on machine learning and machine intelligence, where we believe that deep learning and neural network will be the key uh, to create machines that operate at the beginning a little bit like us. They are able to learn from the environment and start to become useful, um, solve their own goals, while not exactly needing supervision from humans all the time. Really another side of this goal is to introduce, for example, complex visual capabilities in computer appliances, mobile phones, and various applications. Um, the idea of the course is that it's focused really on uh, visual capabilities at the moment, uh, but this can be extended to a variety of other capabilities. And uh, the goal of the course is to introduce these capabilities into computers so that they can start uh, relieving us from tedious tasks, uh, be able to accomplish tasks by themselves, um, and um, and solve them with little supervision. I will now introduce uh, the field of deep learning and why it is important today. Well, deep learning in just in the last uh, three to four years have exploded. While it has been cooking and, and uh, developing uh, from the field of neural networks for, for many, many years, many decades, Deep learning just in the last few years have uh, had a strong, um, um, a strong passage into industry, a strong commercialization and applications of the technology. Uh, all of a sudden, if it became um, from uh, an academic uh, research field to a very applicable field in. Uh, we, we owe a lot of this from some of the people that you see in these slides, like Jan LeCun, that became um, uh, AI director at Facebook, um, but also Andrew Eng, that uh, is also leading Baidu Artificial Intelligence, and, um, and Jeffrey Hinton, uh, that was partly at Google. All of these people contributed immensely, both to the theory and application. Um, and very recently, uh, many other companies have been born out of uh, students and uh, researchers in the field uh, that came out of um, the laboratory of the people that we just mentioned. Uh, and they've all been acquired by the large internet giants like uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Baidu, and so forth. But there's a lot of more um, more startups and more applications that are looking for um, ideas and uh, new technology coming out of deep learning. I think this is just really the beginning. Um, the internet giants have um, hired a lot of students and people and talent from the first batch, uh, but there's a huge need from all sorts of uh, smaller industries as well uh, to get into uh, the the uh, ability that deep learning offers, and also uh, there's there are huge um, uh, there are huge opportunities uh, for new application, new companies, and new devices to come out. And I hope that uh, this class here will bring up uh, some of the talent that is needed, and uh, some of you will become the next uh, biggest entrepreneur in the world and also change the world with, um, with your talent and what you learn in this course. Deep learning has become extremely important, especially since the year 2012, 
um, when uh, a student of Jeffrey Hinton, a postdoc, uh, Alex Krzyzewski, won uh, a very important uh, ImageNet classification, which is uh, how to classify uh, a million images into a thousand categories. You know, so they were showing uh, pictures and um, the idea is to create a computer program that would, uh, from a picture, be able to tell the categories of what's inside this picture. Up to that point, uh, technology was uh, uh, was uh, a variety of technology were employed and what we call computer vision, uh, different techniques uh, that people were, were thinking about. Um, deep learning and basically neural network took over since the year 2012 um, and became one of the a very important technologies to solve this. Since that year, basically, um, the technology has improved um, first very fast and, and, and now with uh, smaller increments and um, to the point that we passed uh, human, uh, surpassed human capabilities uh, even in this, uh, in this task of image net classification. And we'll talk more about this in, in, a, in a later slide also. Well, deep learning became the de facto standard for analyzing images, um, especially in the recent year. You know, we were able to create a neural network system that both um, are able to parse an image, but also produce um, a caption for it uh, by using recurrent neural network and language modeling. Um, they were able to to really caption an image completely, so to describe the, Im the image and the content. This was really not possible just a handful of years ago. Um, and this, and this, all this technology obviously is uh, very important for internet giants and, and, um, and applications of very, various companies because at the, um, at the time where we have lots of images and videos, um, uh, nobody was really able to understand the content of it automatically and all, uh, to rely on human help. So this was uh, uh, really a major problem, of course. Imagine all the YouTube video that uh, are uploaded, uh, the thousands and thousands of uh, man hours of videos uploaded every day. So uh, having the ability to transcribe images, for example, are quite complex into, into text categorizing them into one category or multiple categories or even a caption like this example is of extreme importance. The field is going on. Deep learning and neural networks uh, can enable a variety of new applications that uh, before uh, were not really possible. And now they are possible thanks to a large quantity of data that we have, very powerful machines that we can count on, um, and also uh, the ability of this new algorithm to understand um, images and video. For example, you can think of uh, uh, always-on uh, uh, device um, that will give you superhuman capabilities with an, in an augmented reality sort of device like a Google Glass or a Microsoft HoloLens. They'll be able uh, to spot things uh, in your visual field and because they are connected to the internet, they'll be able to download and connect um, what you see with, uh, with data that you don't have at your disposal in your brain, but it's easily, re easily retrievable on the internet. For example, they will be able to, if you're in a store, they will be able to uh, give you the price of boots in, in other stores and compare it so that you, have, you can decide whether you want to buy it in that store or not. Um, the recent uh, big surge um, in uh, augmented reality gaming, even if played on your phone like uh, Pokemon Go, um, will grow immensely because we'll be able to understand uh, what uh, your device will see, what uh, your uh, augmented reality goggles will see, or your tablet or your phone will see and we'll be able to paint uh, artificial uh, world on top of it uh, for your pleasure, like for gaming, but also uh, for import, you know, for, for practical purposes, like the example that we just shown. So these are both two examples of augmented reality that are extremely powerful. Um, and the recent success of Pokemon Go 
in the fact that um, you know it was able to entertain and pop move a, a variety of population is is um, gives a really good indication of what a great application of the technology can be. But also, you know, there are more interesting things like. Uh, um, being able on the device to always listen to you, um, like in the movie Her, um, not just on command like it is right now, um, from Google, where you run a search, uh, there are also uh, neural network are, uh, are used, uh, but um, a device that is always on listening to you um, and interpreting really when you're talking to the device as opposed to not, it's, it's not really quite there because um, there are no low power technology enough that can process parse video and audio at the same time um, all the time right one of the biggest uh, also move um, uh, in deep learning and hardware technology will be in uh, creating low power servers that can uh, process this uh, big data big amount of data like images and videos uploaded all the time this will require not only very streamlined algorithms. Uh, they are very powerful and efficient, but they will also require some custom hardware um, and machines to, to really execute them. And really what um, um, deep learning will really enable is uh, finally to robot to, be, to perceive the world and start becoming useful. And they might not be um, large humanoid robots like the one we see here, they could be a small uh, a cooking robot that will replace your kitchen and cook food for you or a cleaning robot that will not like the, the Roomba robot that is just a vacuum cleaner but something that will be able to suck dust from every surface and clean like you do or even fold your laundry. Even though this seems like mundane task, um, they are extremely important and maybe the biggest uh, robot uh, technology that will come out and is coming out of deep learning already is the autonomous car where you have um, machines that interpret vision and are able to um, uh, to really guide the, the, the device in this case a car uh, through the world just like you do